Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. And then you can just basically pick your favourite topic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. With noise. Are you okay, please? Yeah. You don't mind? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. What did you say? Your name was? Richard. Richard. I'm Shabir. Yeah. Well, we can have a nice, pleasant conversation. What does Shabir mean? The name. Do you know, it's quite a common the, you know, name. The, the actual uh, way of pronouncing it is Sadir. Oh, meaning the patient one. Oh, very good. Well, it fits. Well. I'm the patient. <laughs> All right. So I'll just yeah, sure, I'll sure. describe the things I was talking about. So yeah, reasons sure. why I'm a Christian. Um, I believe that the New Testament fulfills the prophecies of the Old Testament. That's point number one, prophecy. Point number two, history. I believe that historically Jesus died and rose again. And point number three, spiritually, I believe I've experienced God. I believe that the power of God, the Holy Spirit, has changed my life and helped me to become a better person. And I also find that when I read the Bible, I find this message to be spiritually enlightening and true. So those are probably the three big reasons why I'm a Christian, off the top of my head. In terms of why I'm not a Muslim, the main objections off the top of my head are my reading of the Quran and the Hadith is that Islam affirms the Jewish and Christian scriptures as being true and reliable and that we should use, we Jews and Christians should use them even though they contradict the message of Islam therefore there is an internal inconsistency within the Islamic appeal to the former scriptures so that's point number one point number two the Quran seems to think that Jews and Christians will find Muhammad prophesied in our scriptures uh, and I do not believe that he is um, Point number three, I mean, there are a number of kind of minor contradictions or errors that you can raise. I don't normally go to those because you can do the same with the Bible. Um, it's not the most fruitful approach. Um, but those might be the two main issues with Islam, the first two I mentioned. So pick your favourite topic. All of them. All of them? <laughs> well, we should be here a very long time. Uh, no, surprisingly, actually. Yeah. You see, uh, I would agree with your sentiments. As an individual, we are entitled to believe what we want to believe. Uh, but uh, you use the word uh, historical, which is interesting, because any any set of beliefs, yes, yeah. will usually come about as a result of either study yeah. or having been told by someone to merely accept sure. what has been said. Uh, now, if we look at the evidence that is available, and I'm one of those guys who. Uh, find the approach odd with some people who prefer to leave the primary source sure. and relate their belief to external sources, which is odd. What I mean by that is, if I gave a choice to a Christian between the contents of the Bible and the historical element, which one would take primacy? So I would say the, the scriptures, but this isn't what I meant by history. No, no, I understand. Okay. But I'm just saying the, the, the way I look okay. at things, yeah? So you find that there are people who are now trying to lend support for the primary source through sure. secondary sources. Okay. Yet, if you address the primary source, yeah. it is not fitting up to the bill, as okay. it were. Okay. okay? So, when, when somebody tells me, as you rightly pointed out, that if you look at the New Testament, it is basically fulfilling the prophecies contained okay. in the previous scriptures, yeah. whatever they, have, they may have been. But the interesting thing is this, what scriptures, according to your understanding, have actually been fulfilled in the New Testament? Yeah. Now, before I, I discuss this further, can I just ask what kind of a Christian you are? I'm an evangelical Christian. Uh, how evangelical. Right, okay. How do you believe Jesus to be? Uh, fully, Son of fully God, man. God, fully man? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, right, that's fine. Now, if we look at the prophecies that you are talking about from the Old Testament, what prophecies did Jesus fulfill? So, I mean, there are a number. Uh, maybe my favorite is Isaiah 53, so we okay. can focus on one. Yeah, sure. uh, but I do think, you know, Isaiah, uh, maybe Zechariah, Micah, Daniel, um, off of my head. Yeah. Okay. If we go to Isaiah 53, what is it that was fulfilled? Can I get it out? Yeah, it? of course, absolutely. The thing about Isaiah 53 is, I think there is so much that is fulfilled in Jesus and it's so evident mm. that really it's not worth picking out one particular bit, it's worth Understand. reading the chapter. Oh, yeah, sure. I picked up the wrong book. I was about to say, you just put that I one did. back in. Not a thing. I can't multitask. <laughs> not to worry, not to worry. All right. <sighs> 
So the entire narrative of the redemptive suffering of the servant, I would say, is fulfilled in Jesus. All right. So I'll read it fairly quickly. So yeah, 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 of course. Uh, so beginning Isaiah 52, verse 13, going into chapter 13. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high, just as there were many who were astonished at him. So marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. And he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that has led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away, who could have imagined his future? He was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked, and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When he make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So thank you for bearing with me. I basically think there's a parallel in pretty much every verse there. So that's why I felt it was helpful to read it rather than point. I understand. Yeah, yes, yeah, of course. Now, what is it that was fulfilled exactly? Okay, well, if you'd like me to go through. So beginning with uh, 5213, so my servant shall prosper, be exalted and lifted up and be very high. Okay. Obviously Jesus was exalted and lifted up and be very high. Can it be any other person? Sorry? Can it be any other person that it's referring to? Is there a possibility? So I mean, I'm trying to think from the time of Isaiah onwards, hmm. I'm not sure who else. But it can, it can also and lifted up in that manner. Yeah, but it can also not be restricted up to Jesus. It can also be after, because this, yeah, yeah, this yeah. doesn't specify a particular. Yeah. So, from what you have just said so far, can it apply? There is a possibility. Yes. Yeah. Let's Jesus. let's move okay. on. Yeah. Um, it's just really interesting the idea of being lifted up. That's explicitly yeah, yeah. used in the New Testament. For of course, of course. Um, so there were many who were astonished at him. So marred, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. This fits very nicely with the, the flogging that happens before crucifixion, which would utterly disfigure its subject. Because it wasn't just whips, they had bits of uh, metal in, bits of bone that would lacerate the skin. Mm. Uh, and actually our ancient sources that describe crucifixion even des describe the back as kind of unrecognisable, a, a quivering mess of human flesh, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so that's verse 14. Verse 15, he shall startle many nations, kings shall shut their mouths at mm. him. What have not been told them, they shall see what they have not heard, shall, they shall contemplate. Mm. So an astonishing message will go out to all the world. Right, can I stop yeah. you there? You see, if it's a prophecy, yeah. the prophecy has to be time specific. Not necessarily. What do you mean? Uh, if I can just, yeah. yeah? Not only that, but for a prophecy to be considered to be effective, it has to literally come true. Um, I, First of all, what do you mean it has to be time specific? And secondly, what do you mean by literally being true? I'll tell you. If I said, as I suggested to you, can it be any other person? Because there's no specific name okay. in Isaiah 53 or even 52, Apart 59. From my servant, yeah? yeah? That is not a name. It is not a name, no, it's a title. Okay. So, so you have to look at who else. So now, exactly, and I agree with you. But now, when we say time specific, yeah? If the prophecy is meant to be for him, okay, okay it won't extend beyond him. Uh, well that if is, we that take that reasoning, sure. okay. but we don't have that. We know that this potentially can mean for somebody before him or even possibly after him, yep. theoretically speaking. Yep. Okay. Question: If it says that about this particular individual, yep. okay, whoever this individual is, how do we know definitively it is Jesus? 
So basically, you match it to the person who fits it the best. Okay. For example, this is a, so some of this Muslims might like to say, well, this person who comes, kings will hear about him. He's astonishing. A lot of that could apply to Muhammad. But when you carry on, you see the way that he's described as taking on vicarious suffering. That is yes. suffering on behalf well, of other people. That fits really well with Jesus, right. and especially you know making his grave. Yeah, what that, is it? Grave that's with the wicked. Yeah, tomb of the rich. that's true, Richard. So but what I'm asking is where the verse that you just read out. It talks about him being known by kings if you read it so again verse 15 he shall yeah. startle many nations right stop there I'm when not, it well, says I'm not first. oh sorry apologies uh, same verse kings yeah. shall shut their mouths because of him for that which had not been told them they shall see and that which they have not heard they shall contemplate excellent name me three kings who were aware of this well, since the, what, since the time of Jesus? No, it, uh, that's it. You see, I'm so glad you said that because if we say since the time of Jesus, then what we are li literally saying is that the prophecy is not restricted to the individual being talked about, but to the nation subsequent. Well, this particular bit, yeah. um, yes, it can be very general. Many shall hear of Jesus, okay. yes. So, and that can be all time space since Jesus, yes. Right. So now the problem then arises is this for me. Okay, let's try and search through history, yeah, and okay. potentially, I use the word operative, potentially find other subjects who may be able to fit this, okay? So then we come to Isaiah 53, okay. yeah? The king's one, if it's not a literal prophecy, then we can apply it and say, well, it might mean more than what we think, correct? Uh, okay. Yeah, so if we go to Isaiah 53. Okay. How does that prove it is talking about Jesus? Okay. Now, I'm partly making a cumulative case. Here. No problem, no problem. So I understand. All the verses seem to match Jesus nicely. Yes. Together, that yeah. strengthens the probability that it is. Much Absolutely. more so than just taking one isolated verse. Correct. Um, so, moving into Isaiah 53. Yeah. Um, who has believed what we have heard and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? This is really interesting. So, who has believed what we have heard suggests that many will struggle to believe this message, which of course was true of Jesus. The majority of his Jewish kinsmen rejected him. Uh, to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Mm. The arm of the Lord is often used in the Old Testament for God's saving activity. So this is a message that will be in some sense... Can you give me one example of that somewhere else uh, in the, the Bible? the top of my head, I mean, I think it's described that the Lord saved the people of Israel um, out of Egypt. That's either with a mighty hand, I think it might be with a mighty arm, but I have to check. Okay, I'm not sure we'll check that, yeah, but the mighty law. Sorry? Read the verse again. Uh, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Yeah. yeah, when you talk about the arm of the Lord, what do we mean? It is a metaphor that is, from my understanding, it is a If it's a prophecy, that, yeah. should it contain metaphors? Why not? I'll tell you why. Yeah. You see, if it contains metaphors, then we have this problem, like for example in Matthew chapter 2 verse 23. Okay. It talks about a prophecy of the Nazarene. Okay. Where's that prophecy? Ah, well that's a tricky one. So people have very different theories about why that's the case. Um, something maybe it comes from Netzer, kind of the branch, so maybe that's the root. Um, something that um, is to do with the, the humility, that because he's a Nazarene, he's humble and this is the description. Agreed, but you are interpreting the verse. I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you, it claims that this was prophesied. Where is that prophecy? It's, it's very interesting because a lot yeah. of them it says this was done to fulfill the scripture spoken through the prophet, etc. Mm -hmm. Yet for this verse, it's rather different. It doesn't have that same fulfillment formula. It has as the prophet say. So what is it? It's actually hinting that this may have intentionally been an amalgamation of different prophecies put together. Right, okay. So when and, and Can I just say, yeah, sure. the, the way many people today understand prophecy is not necessarily how either academics today or people back then understood prophecy. Prophecy Agreed. is complex or can Agreed. be complex. They can be complex, can't they? They can possibly be also misinterpreted. They can, can't they? So, if we go further, and I mean, like I said, when we are looking at the prophecy, okay, if it says the arm of the Lord, we have to try and understand exactly what it means yeah. but for prophecy it's a different issue because when you talk about jesus christ being prophesied yeah. yeah and you said rightly according to your belief that the new testament consists of information which shows that whatever was prophesied about him yeah. came to pass sure yes yeah. yeah i am questioning the validity of that you know transmission okay. yeah for the purpose of the discussion, obviously, yeah? Where you refer to Isaiah 53 as an example, and we started at 52, 13, 14, and odd one, 
it's telling us something. What I am saying is, how do we definitively know this is referring to him? So we have said one thing about uh, the kings, and we have realized, well, actually, it might not be literal in application. It what, may extend I, beyond. I, I never said that it wasn't literal in application. No, I'm saying it. You're saying I'm it. I'm saying okay. it. But if you are going to say you didn't say it, then I will counter and ask you, okay, are you saying it is literally applied? Um, the bit about the kings, I, I see yes. no reason why that shouldn't be literal. So it's, say yes, but for the sake of the argument, I'm going to okay. now say it's literal. Let's, let's say yes. Yeah. And if it's literal, name me three kings that he knew about or who knew about him. Um, Queen Elizabeth, uh, the king of Japan, <laughs> whoever he was, just abdicated. R right. No. What, was that at the time that he was? I never said it had to only be at the time. Ah, but, so but even, at, even at the time, I mean, yeah. during his own lifetime, it's possible what? word spread to kings, but we don't necessarily know that. As, sorry? If yeah, I guess I'm thinking of kind of sovereign kings. Absolutely. Yes, ruler kings and Herod. I'm so glad you just you just made that distinction because we would need to know we would need to know what did did see I don't know if I mean well emperor rather than king whatever the distinction is there <laughs> yes. during Jesus's own lifetime I don't know if Caesar would have necessarily could have but I don't know if necessarily did. Well, I'm talking to Oh, you don't worry about it, Richard. His only no, no, opinion. No, no. Please, please. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Very good point. Yeah. Thank you. Gave me a good example. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good example. Sure. But this is where, the, again, this the, the distinction lies. Yeah. What does the word actually mean? Yeah. So, for example, where it says, where it says whether it's kings or rulers, as you rightly pointed out, is it talking about sovereign authority or is it talking about the, the chief of the next village. E even yeah. if it is yeah. sovereign rulers, let's take a very restricted definition, even if it is purely sovereign rulers, uh -huh. um, who, who weren't even emperors, they, they went by the title king, you know, Bas Basilus in Greek, yeah. um, or Melech in Hebrew. Yeah. Um, even if we're very restrictive about that, at that time, as the Christian movement spread, I find it very feasible to imagine that most people in that environment would have heard about it. You see, I have no problem with Whenever that. Whenever they hear about the religion, Christianity, yeah. they will say, well, who is Christ? I have no problem yeah. with that. Okay. But here is where my contention earlier on was about prophecy and how it needs to be defined. Yeah? So maybe perhaps we should do that. In your, in your, from your perspective, what is the definition of a prophecy? Very good question. And this actually, this issue comes up a lot at Speaker's Corner. So a prophecy is not necessarily about the future. It's not necessarily a prediction. Prophecies can often just be, I mean, I would say at its core, prophecy is communication from God to humans, and it can be about contemporary events, Yes. not always about the future. Right, okay. Now, is that your personal view? Yeah. It is. I, I would say that is my personal view. I believe that is kind of the, the, the mainstream academic understanding, but okay. I'm happy to be corrected. Right, okay. So let's follow that. If we do not take prophecies to be fulfilled literally, yes, then there is a potential, as I said earlier on, for us to be able to interpret into a prophecy what we think fits. That's true, but I'm okay. not sure why so you let's to say, um, before we go down that, that yeah, sure, path, sure, sure. I'm not sure we need to go down that path because so far I've not needed to interpret anything non Okay, let so me let's not go there unless we have to. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay. Going to Isaiah 53, yeah. if you go to verses 10, 11 and 12, yeah. just read them. Uh, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Stop. Yeah. He shall see his, his offspring and the Lord shall prolong his days. Yeah. What does that mean? That's a tough one. I mean, maybe offspring here might be non-literal. Maybe that is referring to those who are born of the Spirit by his ministry. Okay. I'm not sure. The verse actually talks about, and the word used is seed. Right. What is a seed in biblical understanding? Well, a seed, a seed is often a physical offspring. A seed uh, is also used to refer to kind of the seed of woman who shall cross the serpent in Genesis 3.15. But what is that seed? That Sorry? What is that seed? Well, Christians often say maybe that's referring to the Christ, so, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> but, um, but we know that the, uh, the, throughout the Bible, when the word seed is used, as you rightly pointed out, it is talking about offspring. So, now, the question is, where Isaiah 53, verse 11 and 12, is talking about how he shall see his offspring and his days shall be prolonged. Now, when it says his day, I'm just, 
His day shall be prolonged from what? Um, from the so I think by this point the suffering servant has already died. He's already been cut off from the land of the living. So I think this is part of the reference to his resurrection. His, although his life was prematurely cut short, his days will be prolonged because he will be I, resurrected to eternal Richard, life. Richard, uh, yeah. it is Richard, isn't yeah. it? Uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I would suggest that perhaps here belief has entered in. And I, what I mean by that is, you see, if it's talking about after his death, okay. then the question of prolonging his days doesn't apply. The very, the very reason, if we look at the biblical understanding, when he was asked, uh, uh, Master, uh, there are uh, seven uh, husbands and one wife, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, on after uh, resurrection, yeah. who will she it, it belong to? Yeah. Okay, and what does he say? Sorry, I got distracted. It's okay. Um, what does he say? Um, in the resurrection, there'll be no, there, there won't be marriage, will be like the angels. Right. Paul in Corinthians goes a bit further. He says, if it is sown a physical body, it is resurrected a spiritual body. Now, we know also from Romans that once to die after that, the resurrection. The question we have to ask ourselves is if this is what you are suggesting, uh, is referring to perhaps after death, yes? Does the prophecy now also include post resurrection elements? Uh, well, I'm saying I think it is referring to a resurrection. So okay. So, yes. So let's let's go with that one then. Why does it say about him having offspring? I'm not sure. As I said, okay. The best That's thing fine. I can That's understandable. Of of yeah. Head sure. Is that it is referring to those who benefit from his saving activity because Christians Excellent. are called the sons of God. We become co-sons of God along yeah. with Jesus and so on. Right. Um, and actually, in the context, because the whole context. Yes is talking about um, the fruit of his suffering, how this will be vicarious, how this will be atoning for other people. In the Isaiah. Yeah. In, in Isaiah 53. Isaiah I'd be 53. happy to get there. Yeah. So actually the interpretation, although it is symbolic and figurative, the idea that it is talking about that the spiritual offspring of his labors, although it might linguistically be a bit harder, it might actually fit the context better than referring to physical offspring. Okay. Who thus far have not been mentioned, mm. arguably are less relevant to the context. Right. But you would have to agree with me on this, uh, in this particular instance, that you are trying your best to understand what it actually means from what you know. Yeah. It wasn't something you really had considered before. Uh, I've considered it in the past and thought, oh, that's a bit of a tricky one and never and left uh, it got, at that. got distracted. Okay, not, not to worry. That's normal. But the fact is that we are looking at only one of these many prophecies that you said uh, gave you that leaning towards why you are a Christian. Sure. Okay. Sure. And can I just say with this one, yeah, sure. while I do recognize this particular verse is yeah, a bit yeah. of uh, a difficult one, mm. I think the weight of the rest of the passage yes. still leads me to consider that it is yeah. Jesus. You know, That's if it was fine. just this verse, yeah. I wouldn't apply it. To that is fine. The problem, uh, and I, I can see, I can see I'm your sorry, angle. I'm keep it this for now, maybe later. Thank you. I can see your angle, okay? Yeah. And that is what interests me because if, for example, out of 10, verses we have if two of them i mean just are, to say sorry it yeah is, sure sure uh, out of 15. okay let's say out of 15. if we were to look at two verses which basically are flying in the face of the whole story one verse sorry uh, i don't two. i don't I would see go a, with two i'm not sure i, I would go with two in 11. Uh, well i would go with two here uh, no 11 12 okay, if you okay. if you go it talks about okay we are here aren't we yeah is that isaiah 53 yeah. yeah here we have yet it was the will of the lord to crush him with pain 10. Yeah. when you make his life an offering for sin mm -hmm. now if you if you read this yet it was the will of the lord yeah. third party when you make his life an offering for sin yeah. who is talking here um who could now be addressing god it could be but let's just take it further. You see, I, he I shall. Assume it is, yeah. Well, let's let's go yeah. with it. He shall see his offspring, yeah. and shall prolong his days. Yeah. Who's? So he he shall see his offspring. I believe we are now talking about the suffering servant of Isaiah 53. So would it be Jesus? Uh, yes. Okay. I can't go back opinion. to the point though of two verses. So you're saying two verses. Sure. So far, Sorry, I'm only brother. accepting there's difficulty within no one No problem, verse. I don't mind. That's fine, but I'm just clarifying I understand. For, those, for those listening. I understand. Yeah, sure. And of that verse, mm. I actually don't see any difficulty. In fact, it fits really nicely 
three quarters of it. It's a quarter of a verse of problem. fighting problem. I agree with you. And I, I'm glad you are being honest. If, if we look at it, I can agree with you about the rest. But my, okay. my contention would be, if we look at these particular verses, and where it clearly is saying, he shall see his offspring. Yeah, the word offspring is used, he shall see his seed. Okay. okay? Now, when, like I said, in the whole of the Bible, you yeah. look at it, it, when it talks about the word seed, or it uses the word seed, yeah. almost inevitably it is talking about physical offspring. Okay? Now, the question uh, that we are trying to address here is this. If two verses out of 15, as you are saying, are somewhat problematic. I'm not, I, I'm not saying that. I'm okay, saying let that. Us, let, what are you saying then? I'm saying that a quarter of a verse out of 15 is okay. problematic. A quarter of a verse. Okay. <laughs> a quarter of a verse is okay. problematic. Okay, Richard. Sorry. No problem. I don't. I, I have no issue with that. But the thrust of this is that the whole of the chapter yeah. is talking about the suffering servant. Yes. And that is associated with Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Yeah, sure. But if it is associated with the man Jesus Christ, yeah. okay, and he talks about physical offspring and the prolonging of his days yes. then one has to reconsider how one is looking at the prophecy so for example if i were to say and it's common amongst uh, speakers corner and you'll see many videos also there is a contention that when uh, the formulation of the bible was undertaken there were many books which were considered to be apocryphal okay okay but a lot of those apocryphal books yes seem to contain information which may have suggested that the way the storyline has been given in the bible may not necessarily have happened okay. so for example we say jesus christ is mentioned here as the suffering servant it is basically literally prophesying his suffering and crucifixion and subsequent death but now i'm saying to you okay wait a minute no problem i have no issue with that but if we assess this carefully, yeah. we are finding things are not entirely fitting the way we thought they should. So what should we do in the circumstances? So if we look at your quarter amount of 15, yeah. okay, I'm saying, look, I can agree with you. But the problem is this, that it is in that quarter, it is addressing something completely fundamental to the very individual we are discussing. So. If I, if uh, X, for example, sorry to use you as an example, yeah, if X here tells you, Richard, Shabir has got 10 sons, okay. I'll be happy. But then somebody else comes and says, Shabir, uh, yeah, Richard, Shabir has only got two sons. Okay. What would you think? Um, maybe one of them's confused. Maybe they're talking about two different people. Okay, let's say my, me, Shabir, Yusuf, yeah. he talks about, yeah? Okay. What would you think if one gave you 10 yeah. and one gave you 2? Uh, i say one of them's got it wrong. One of them got it wrong. Or possibly both of them are correct, except the guy who met me with 2 did not subsequently find out another 8. I suppose. There's a possibility, isn't there? But what happens now is this. For me to establish if somebody questions the validity of whether I am a father to 10 sons or to 2 sons, sure. I would have to have some evidence to prove either one of the two, okay? I am saying if it's fundamental to the individual, in this case Jesus Christ, then we need to know why in a prophecy which is supposedly talking about his suffering, crucifixion, subsequent death, why has this been introduced where it talks about the potential of him having children and also seeing his life extended. Yeah, I, I might be missing something. I mean, I'm not, sure we've, we've made, I'm not sure we've made a new point, really. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I, I'm I guess just, I just regurgitating sure, I guess I would just in reiterate. a different way. Yeah, sure. I might ask his brother something in a minute. Sure. Um, I might just reiterate that sure. it is a bit of a tricky verse. No problem. Um, but because the rest of it fits Jesus so nicely, yeah. okay. I still think that's a good interpretation. But also, although it is preferable to try and find a literal interpretation of something first, if that fits, a symbolic one is given extra credibility by the context of this verse, which okay. is about the fruit of the, Agreed. you know, the, the 
servant's labour. Agreed. And therefore, for the offspring to be tied to the fruit of his labour Agreed. Uh, would suggest symbolic rather than literal okay. offspring. Sorry, no just before, sure. um, did you say you might have a suggestion about yeah. how to understand yeah, that? Yeah, that was the question of Have to come in a sec. after he died yep. and then resurrected. Okay. And he's going to have to see his offspring. In the Bible, he spoke of born of the spirit and in Isaiah 9, 9 uh, 6 okay. if you read you say his name is eternal father so he's addressed okay. as a father and Jesus says not born of the flesh well, but of the Allah, spirit Allah, 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 yeah. and through that we become children exactly okay. so it's not talking of our canal thinking as human seed okay okay but it's talking of born of the spirit okay. we are now the children of christ okay. even though he didn't father me so i mean I, I, spiritually I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm a father i a son to him yeah, yeah. so it's not talking of carnal thinking if you put your carnal thinking to a you are putting everything out of context so thank you very much i think that's a, it's an interesting suggestion so that's kind of going along with, with what i was saying yeah. but giving me a very helpful scripture so that's isaiah 9 possibly verse 6 can you just read that uh, please? Yeah, yeah, nice. sure i mean I'm not sure, part of the issue is here, I'm not sure how I'd interpret Isaiah 9 6. It's a bit tricky. Yeah. The Hebrew there can either be yes. um, kind of eternal father being. Yes. Christians might say this is Christ, but it calls him eternal father. You, you That's must, one translation. You must, the mother I agree. is father of eternity. Actually, Richard, I, I'm glad you raised that yeah. uh, because the brother may not be aware. But you see, one thing you must you must bear the bear bear in mind make it a hundred i might think about it <laughs> right if you think about it which you are actually trying to understand hebrew verses now not only that but the very essence of the jews in their understanding of the creator was that the creator was one not only that yes. as you as you pointed out yeah if you are going to refer to a particular statement and if i were to take his reasoning forward that we are all the children of god spiritually okay what? i did make it clear i said that it is talking about jesus the human being okay it is talking in the context of the human being who is on earth okay. who is going to undergo this suffering it's not spiritual suffering okay it is a, a, allegedly physical yeah. suffering. Well, if the well, can we, can we, suffering too, well yes. let's add that in. But if we are talking about a prophecy that is going to be physically, you know, but, but he died but first. Uh, he, he uh, paid for the sins sins first. No. Read it again. He paid for yeah, the sins. Then. So, so just, and then after he sees his offspring. So how can somebody die and resurrect and now have a child like flesh and blood? I agree with you. That's the conflict that I'm discussing with him. Yeah. Yes. You see, so if it's told, either you tell me it is a prophecy, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be fitting as Richard has pointed out, yeah. or you are going to tell me, well, now we are going to have to reconsider whether this is actually a prophecy. It may not necessarily be a prophecy, but it makes us understand the context of what it is talking about. What? If we try and do that, then we are going to have to literally throw everything out with the bathwater. Who's saying it's not a prophecy? Because that question sounds like maybe, maybe it's saying water. that a Thank prophecy you. cannot, but that a prophecy has to always be literal, whereas I would challenge that. I, I, I yeah. agree with you okay. if we challenge it, but you see, if you are going to tell me verse 10 is uh, metaphorical, verse 11 is spiritual, verse 12 is physical. Oh, oh. You, it, becomes it, it becomes chaotic. a bit of sure. chaotic and, if I were and doing confusing. This with many verses, I would be very hesitant. Absolutely. But it's because but it's only a quarter of a verse out of 15 verses. I would I'm agree with you. Comfortable yes. With that interpretation, I agree. as well as the contextual consideration. Yes. I, I would agree with you. And I, But as you know, when we started the discussion, what we said is many, many prophecies, and you mentioned Isaiah, and you went on with Micah, etc. And I said, okay, let's just start with Isaiah. Sure. Now, what I'm basically uh, suggesting to you is look, no problem with the belief, yeah? But if we look at the evidence and reassess it, from what I would consider to be an independent, independent view, independent view okay. we find this, that the verse is telling you he is going to suffer. Verse uh, Isaiah 52 that you read, 13, 14 and onward, it talked about how, you know, and you uh, reiterated it by saying that when these people were being, you know, whipped, okay? Right. It was so bad that it was unrecognizable, the back. Some, yeah. As you said. So you were talking physical. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, 
the verse the verse is talking physical well in between physical suddenly it talks about his uh, offspring and his days shall be prolonged it suddenly switched to spiritual Can I not, why is that a problem no. necessarily uh, no, i didn't say it's a problem i like i like i, 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 I really i really like your help no, earlier i want to i, I want to kind of keep two time. people otherwise just get it's okay yes, yes, i read this and then i'll leave you what, what, what are you what are you reading let's take it carefully it says yet it is pleased the lord to breathe him okay yeah. he has put him to breathe yeah now when you make his soul yeah. an offering for sin. Now this okay. is somebody died. Okay. So offering. So you cut him off to pacify. Okay. To kill an animal is to take that animal soul for sin for sure. So okay. he died. Yeah, okay. Now the next verse is saying he shall see his seed. Now, if he has died and he shall see his seed, that yeah. is after his resurrection. Well, yeah. So it's now yeah. spirit, not a flesh and blood again. Um Yes, I mean the resurrection body issue comes in then. Yeah, I mean, I would say the resurrection body was physical. When the door was there, it was locked. He was, he entered without opening the door. So he says, yeah, which our body. Yeah, I mean Christians have had different understandings of what spiritual body means. Some <laughs> no, no, no. would say it's still. Yeah. Is, is, is this spiritual or not spiritual? Because if the door locked well, and somebody so entered without opening the door. I think, I think the way the, the New Testament normally uses spiritual is as opposed to fleshly, that is sinful. It doesn't necessarily mean not physical. Okay. At times, Jesus' resurrection is physical. Richard, Richard. Brother, can you yeah. just read that same verse? Yeah. Just read it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What does it say? Yeah, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain hmm? when you make his life an offering for Stop sin. there. Yeah. What does yours say? So. <laughs> say so. What does yours say? When you make his soul Stop there. offering for sin. Now yeah. it says here. Yeah. Life. Life. What does it say there? So, yeah. Which one is it? The same. <laughs> I know, I know you will know what I mean. Okay? Is it the same? Yes, yes. Um, I think the Hebrew words could mean either. Yes. So they are different the nuances. Right. Words. If we look if, if life it, to animal, uh, soul to animal, it's the I, same, taking the life of. Yeah, it's and, and I mean, in, in old fashioned English, I mean, is that King James Version? Yes. In, in old fashioned okay. English, can I, can I just in, right. in old fashioned English, including the King James Version, soul could be used just to refer to someone's life. life. Okay. So, you see, if I were to take this reasoning forward yeah. and I tell you uh, Ezekiel, yeah. Right. talks about how the soul that sins it shall die yeah, yeah i would say that is now if we look at the word soul is that a living being uh, uh is, sorry what this gentleman, if you have life what this gentleman soul, I'm, I'm coming yeah if you have life you have a soul okay if you die your soul is dead so it is not separable. right okay he says it's not separable but i would i would contend to him that paul has a different view in 1 corinthians 15 44 okay. yeah. he says if it is sown a physical body it is raised a spiritual body yeah, what is this what is a physical body is it a soul no, when you just, die, just, sorry what soul, was that when you die no your soul exactly so when he talks about here yeah. and i don't want us to yeah. stick on on this but where he talks about here about him his life mm -hmm. and offering yeah. and he says soul yeah we would need to definitively know which one it is if we are going to attribute isaiah 53 as the prophecy for christ well as i said they our translations could well be saying the same thing except yeah. that one was written 400 years ago and english not he okay changed. but but i would just add yes. even if this verse were thoroughly unclear no one could work out what it meant yes that still wouldn't mean that the other 14 and three quarter verses yes would fit Christ really nicely. Okay, no so problem. So I, I don't insist you have to be perfectly crystal clear in no, every little bit. No, but what I would, I would, uh, I, I agree with you. If we look at it from that perspective, however, I would want to add one element here. You see, if one, a quarter you said, yeah, of 15 verses yeah. is not entirely clear. Yeah. I would suggest to you, okay, if we look at 500 prophecies, yeah and 375 are not clear should we attribute them to jesus well if a, if a prophecy is not clear um then no i i, I would be very reluctant to apply to jesus i agree but now if we look at how prophecy has been understood and misunderstood also within the content uh, context of the bible yeah. then we would need to know whether when a prophecy is suggesting that it may be jesus christ 
or X or Y, sure. then we would need to make sure that it is so definitive that we can, by definition, exclude any other individual in relation to the prophecy. So I guess I'm saying that Isaiah 53 is specific enough that I would want to apply this to Jesus and no one else. I'm not sure okay. anyone Okay, no problem. Exactly. And I am saying, well, wait a minute. The problem here is this, that although you are saying there are only two verses out of 15 or, or, uh, or you, out of 15 problem. verses, there are only a quarter. Thank you. Yeah, whichever it is. Sure. And I agree with you, Richard. Sure, yeah. The problem is this, that the, that quarter, what it is talking about clearly will by definition if it is attributed to jesus will clearly exclude all the rest of the prophecies why very easy if the person yeah. is going to have his life prolonged okay. no crucifixion if why if i can just uh, sorry if i can, if uh, I can uh, yeah yeah no crucifixion because that crucifixion according to christian understanding had to lead to death but if his life was prolonged well, he didn't die. And if he saw his seed, he definitely got married or whichever way you want to look at it. The, now, can you see that 15, a quarter of 15 yeah. is really a huge issue yeah. from the perspective you see it. You see, as I'm contending that, look, if it says yeah. he shall prolong his days yeah. and he shall see his offspring. If I were to understand that in a normal context and according to how the Bible uses the word seed, yep. then according to this prophecy, whoever it is talking about will have survived whatever it is he was supposed to have undergone and subsequently settled down, got married and, and had children. Okay. So now that quarter sure. has suddenly become so a huge if, quarter. If, that call, if your interpretations were as absolutely clear as you think they are, then I agree that would pose real problems for my interpretation, but I don't think they're that clear. Tell for me example, why. on the seed, I've mentioned before my interpretation, which I think is less plausible, and less natural, but still plausible. Mm -hmm. uh, you say about Zera seed always being used literally. I'm kind of taking your word on that. I don't know. I would have to go and check that out before I make it. What, what we will do, because... Just carry on a bit more. Sure, uh, we've not sorry. talked much about prolonging of days. Yeah. I don't see any reason why prolonging of days, or lengthening of days, or whatever the Hebrew might be. Yes. Uh, or increasing multiplying whatever the Hebrew nuance is, yeah. why that can't be applied to post-resurrection as opposed to something that never dies. In fact, even putting aside Jesus, I still think the context more clearly suggests okay. this is a person who has died because he's cut off understand. from the land of oh, the living. Okay, in, in, in that context... And also, sorry, and sure. also if his, you know, his soul is an offering for sin or his life, hmm. um, in the Old Testament, because you pointed out earlier, the sacrificial animal isn't just punished, it is killed. Okay. So I think this servant has to actually die. No problem. And then it's described as prolonged. I, I entirely agree with you, Richard. Not a problem. I entirely agree with you. If one wants to believe it like that, what I would suggest, and I don't mean you personally, generally speaking, if we were to look at the evidence, as I was saying, from an independent perspective, this is what we find. I said that when uh, in Ezekiel, it says the soul that sins, it shall die. The word soul is relating to a living being because a living being can commit sin. Sure. Can a soul after resurrection commit sin? No. Thank you. So it's talking about yeah. living beings yeah. in that context. Yeah. So when the same word now is applied in a prophecy which may not necessarily be clear, yes, then the convention is that you take the most basic understanding to the word before you apply any other understanding to it. Sure, I mean, you, okay. are, you are, first of all, you are taking one example yeah, of, of Ezekiel, yeah. saying that's the yeah. basic understanding. Now, I would need to sit down and look at no problem. all no the problem. uses of I, No I mean, problem. I, sorry, well, I, mean, yeah, I assume sure. the word is I agree, I agree with you. I agree, and I'm, I'm so appreciative of you being so honest. Sure. But and if in I terms can... of the post-resurrection, I mean, I might speak yes. to my brother here. I'm not okay. sure it's not clear. Yes. I am saying that after his resurrection, he wasn't just the spirit. He did have a body. Yeah, okay, okay. no problem. I can, I can agree with that. But here is where the problem lies. You know where you just said, he, is, he was spiritual, but he did have a body. Okay, why, why I say that? You see, the understanding has to be conventional. So, in the context of verse uh, 11, 12 and 13, there is a common verse that is usually discussed amongst Muslims and Christians about whether Jesus was crucified and killed. Sure. Yeah. So four, one fifty seven. No, or? Hebrews oh, chapter five, verse seven. Okay. <laughs> okay. What does it say there? Uh, say who, Hebrews. Who, Hebrews chapter five, verse seven. Who in the days of his flesh offered okay. up prayers and supplications okay. to him that was able to save him from death, and he was heard in that he feared. 
Now, when it says he was heard, according to conventional understanding of the Bible, yeah. what does it mean? Um, so he was heard and that although he died, he was brought back to life. So the resurrection was kind of the vindication of Jesus God heard him and asked Okay, him right, listen to it again. Who in the days of his flesh offered up prayers and supplications? You're, Who in the days of his flesh? What does that mean? Uh, so I presume that means pre-crucifixion or resurrection. When he was alive. Yep. Who in the days of his flesh offered up prayers and supplications to him that was able so save to save him from, from Who could save him from death? God, the Father. And was heard in that he feared. Okay. What, what does that mean? He was heard in that he was resurrected. Because right. It Stop there. Say, sorry, sorry. It doesn't say that the answering of that prayer took place still during the days of the flesh. Yeah. I'm so glad time for chronological progression. I'm so glad you said that because you see it's a matter of interpretation now, isn't it? You see, because if I were to tell you this, okay. yeah, interpreted in the life of the rest of Hebrews. Uh, yeah. Not only that, in the context of the understanding of the Bible. So, uh, and I've discussed this with many of my Christian friends. Yeah. yeah? So when it says he made a prayer, a supplication. Where did he make that supplication? Uh, Gethsemane, maybe. Agreed. Gethsemane. That is where he did it. Yeah, in chapter 26 of Matthew. Yeah, he says there, Father, take this cup away for me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. I'm looking at the context of the language here. Okay, in what we are discussing. So when he is telling you that, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, Never, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Okay. Yeah. Now, Jesus Christ, like a true servant of God, yes, yeah. is submitting his will to the, God, to the Creator. He's telling him, not as my will, but as your will. Whatever you oh, think yeah. best. Okay. okay. Now, do we literally understand that? Um, yeah. Okay. Should we literally understand it? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so he makes a prayer to God, asking him to do what? Uh, to save him from that hour, let the cup pass. Save him from what? Uh, from the upcoming crucifixion and death. Exactly. Okay. okay. But that is what he's asking. Now the question you just raised uh, about Hebrews 5, 7. Did the Creator accept and hear his prayer? So the two options here are... Uh, sure. So sorry, one second. Sorry. It's important. Uh, it's sure, 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 sure. just as important. I mean, we're having a discussion. Yeah. Okay. This, this can open up Thank you. Um, there are two options. Either it's not that occasion that is being referred to in Hebrews 5, 7, whatever. Yeah. It was. I mean, Jesus spoke many things. Uh, if it's Paul, in the days Paul of the flesh, then maybe this is referring to an ongoing supplication. I don't know. Possibly. Um, or maybe it's referring to the core of it, which is that he fears death. And although he has to be crucified, he will still be returned to life again. So maybe True. the core of the prayer was answered even if the particular details didn't plan out as Jesus might true, have wished. True. So those I, 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 told, I, I agree with you, Richard. Yeah. But can you see there's a multitude of aspects which can yes. be considered yes. just from one verse. But if I were to take it on a basic premise and look at the statements on a basic level, understand it basically first yeah. before yeah. going into something more complicated. So he says, who in the days of his flesh? Yeah, okay. this, this is in the context of Isaiah, by the way. Yeah, because it talks about the prolonging of days. Yeah, and seeing offspring. He says, who in the days of his flesh offered the prayers and supplication was heard in that he feared. Matthew 26 tells us that he said to God, Father, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Now, the question arises here. And this is a question I often ask my Christian friends. When Christ made any kind of supplication to the Creator, yeah. did the Creator ever not hear him? Well, possibly in this occasion, but I have just thought of something else which is interesting. Sure. Which is, what is the cup of the Lord? I mean, perhaps the cup of the Lord is not just the momentary suffering of crucifixion and the bearing of sins. Perhaps it refers to the ongoing being cut off. If the punishment for sin is death, and that is the cup of the Lord, then perhaps by being rescued from the cup of the Lord, maybe it's being passed away from him, is his resurrection because he's not staying in that state of death. Mm. So that could be another interpretation I would throw to the base. Yeah, I agreed. But like I said, you start off with the basic one first. 
And if it doesn't make sense on a basic level, yeah. then you go to something other than that. I mean, but even so, if you just want to stick with the most basic level, yes. because I don't think that's always the best approach, of course. because I do believe in harmonization yeah. of scripture. But even if you stick with the most basic level, it is quite possible that what is being referred to in Hebrews 5-7 is not the Garden of Gethsemane. It's possible. a different prayer. Possible. But we know, as you rightly pointed out, one instance of where... So maybe that prayer wasn't answered. What, or, or okay, wasn't. let's say maybe it wasn't. But now, I either accept what you say, or I accept what the Bible says. Which one should you expect me to accept? Of course the Bible. Okay, so if the Bible says in the Gospel of John chapter 11 verse 41, yeah. this is when uh, the person, his uh, dear beloved friend passed away, okay. Lazarus. Lazarus yeah. He says, according to the verse, and by all means, you can check it. And the father always he says, him. Yeah, yeah, no, no, he says, he says, Father, because he says something, first he tells the ladies, you will see the glory of God, yeah? He said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. But he says that for those around him, yeah. Who is Jesus saying it for? Well, he's saying that for the benefit of the people around Excellent. him. Excellent. Yeah. What is he saying to the people? Uh, that the Father listens to Jesus and... The, the, the Father, father does what always requests. hears yeah. his request. What does always mean? Uh, I think well, always means always in the context. Seven, I but I would say that the Great. fact that the Father always hears and listens to the Son doesn't necessarily mean he's always granted the exact thing. Seven, Sorry, please, because please, because please. Point, if you read it better, it's No, 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 I agree. We will come later. Um, but so, no, just if, finish. Yeah, um, sure. so, I mean, for example, Christians, you know, you could say that Christians are always heard by the Father because we're in a loving relationship with him. But at the same time, God may not always answer prayers exactly as we wish even though he listens to us for example paul we know we know that paul had a close paul the apostle had a close relationship with god yet even he didn't always get exactly what he wants because in corinthians we see he still has the thorn in the flesh so mm. god heard him god answered him mm. but it wasn't in exactly the way that he expected yeah. no, sorry I, sorry yeah. I want to before hebrews 7, 5, 7, because before you go there can i just respond um, yeah. we'll, we'll come to that can i just okay. respond to what you said we will come to it right. you see what you said about that, I can agree about Paul. But the difference here is this, that nowhere in all of writing, all of the writings attributed to Paul, do we have a statement where he says, Father, you always hear me. Okay. There's a distinction made. Now, Christ Jesus, according to the verse says, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, we must understand the convention of language that if you are, if I say, I always say hello, yeah, yeah then I always say hello. Always according to the intended meaning. Yes. Excellent. Always is Excellent. You see, it can be flexible, but if the intended meaning is tell, making you understand that when Jesus Christ asked for anything, he got it, yes, we would have to, now here is the turn on it. We would have to find one incident where when Christ asked for it, it was not heard. Sure. Before I respond to that. Sure. Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. go. You say Hebrew 5 7, yeah? yeah? Let's together say, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with veh vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death yeah. and was heard because of his godly fear. Now, verse 8, though he was a son. Yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Yeah. So God heard the prayers, but he still went so the and prayers suffered. prayers isn't necessarily being saved from the suffering. The reason why it mentions that he was yeah. able to save him from suffering is because no, no. it's just about yeah, to mention the voluntary that he suffered it in any Right, not only that. No, no, he suffered but it anyway. That's what he's yeah. saying. Yeah, but okay. can I just I'm ask? Saying, no, 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 say, say, say what? By the things which he suffered. So the prayers were heard. Yeah. But yet, he went That's through the suffering. Right, that is very so fascinating actually. Can I, can, yeah. can, yeah. sorry, yeah. can I, sorry, can I just, it is quite fascinating actually, because if he, if I were to take his line of reasoning, mm -hmm. and he says uh, that it was the suffering, then I would contend to you that Isaiah 53, verses 11, 12, and 13, talk about how he did survive it and then did have offspring. No, he didn't survive. I I just say he sacrificed his life. No, no. How can I'm you just going to your life. That's your belief. Survive? I'm looking at the evidence that you yeah, just yeah, quoted. He really, so, I say, I say oh, he, by all means. He sacrificed, he sacrificed oh, that's good. Life. You've got it here. We should, we should, let's go and so, check Isaiah 53. No, no. When you read it, did he say he didn't suffer his life? No, sacrifice? I didn't say that. In Isaiah 53. 
he said he sacrificed his life in other Yeah, I, I would argue that. So, yeah. To sacrifice your life means you die. Yes. Exactly. No, no, no yeah. sacrifice oh. is different from suffering. No, no, no. You you put Let's, that. You put that. Exactly I was going with Isaiah 53. No, no, exactly. But I'm saying that. No, I think you you should have maybe understood what was being no, said. That Sorry. Verse says he, yeah. He died. That verse says he died. I mean, it is really interesting yeah. because although we're talking about, I mean, I probably should have done this at the beginning to read the context. <laughs> I'm very bad at that. So don't go worry, on. don't you worry. Make a good point, which is that we're talking about the meaning of Hebrews five seven, but Hebrews five eight yeah. seems to assume, as does the rest of the book of Hebrews, that Jesus did in fact die. So Hebrews five eight says, okay, yes. Uh, although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Mm. So it's just making me think, now, well, maybe what he's requesting isn't yeah. necessarily a actually, being safe actually, you're right. But if you look at the context, it supports our contention, or rather my wow. contention. I'll tell you how. You see, because if it is talking about suffering, yes? Yeah. Uh, does Isaiah 53 talk about his suffering? Sure. Yes, it does. Uh, is that literal? Yeah. Suffering? Yes. All right, what do we got? Uh, we've got uh, stricken, struck down, afflicted, wounded, crushed. Collectively, what is it? Uh, collectively, suffering, yeah. Is that literal? Also it's well, it seems literal. to be literal. It seems yeah. to be. So when, when it comes to this ones, is that literal? Uh, I'm saying the only bit that may not be literal is uh, Hebrew, okay. is Isaiah 52, right. 10. Right, okay. If we look at it from that perspective yeah. and go back to Hebrews 5, 7 yeah. and uh, 5, 8, okay? Yeah. We find the word suffering, we find yeah. what it says here, and as you said, in the context. But if we take it in the context, the verse here where it says, offer the prayers and supplications to him that was able to save him from death. Yeah. What was that prayer for? Well, that's what I'm now wondering. I assumed earlier I'm glad. to save him from death. But I'm not entirely sure if it is. I mean, it may have been not to remain in death, even if temporarily he accepted that he had to die. What do you mean remain in death? Because I mean, the, sorry? What do you mean remain in death? Well, I mean, so Jesus died, but you know, three days rose again. So he wasn't in death permanently. So are we looking at it so from that a, may have been his prayer. So are we looking at it from a purposive construction rather than a literal one? Second. Are we looking at the verses now from a purposive construction rather than a literal construction? Well, I, I'm not quite sure what you mean by purpose. Right, basically, you're looking at the verses and thinking, ah, I think the purpose of these verses is X rather than the literal reading. Well, I'm trying to say... Sorry, I should have made it I, I am yeah. trying, <laughs> in a sense, yes, because I'm trying to harmonize this with the rest I of the I understand, script. because it is... But, but, but also, it, what you're considering a literal interpretation doesn't just disagree with the rest of Christian theology. It disagrees with the author of the rest of Hebrew. Right. And to okay. be a responsible interpreter is to yeah. allow an author to interpret himself. Yeah. Right? Including in the very next Absolutely. verse. Absolutely. But I would just say, I mean, now that I'm looking at I, sorry, Hebrews 5, 7 more closely, mm. the one who was able to save him from death, well, in a sense, he was saved from death because he wasn't abandoned to death. His death was temporary. Yeah. Stop there. Stop out, there. Stop there, Richard. When you say, one, in a sense... Seconds, sorry, sorry, sorry. I think elsewhere, he, Scripture may even say that Jesus tasted death. So the idea, there's the idea of experiencing it, but not for long. Sorry, back to you. Right, okay. You know when you say, in a sense, yeah. death, in a sense, yeah. what do you mean? What I just said, that so scripture elsewhere speaks of Christ tasting death, because he, he temporarily died, even though he was shortly after resurrected. Okay, let's go with that. According to the understanding here, he tasted death. Yeah. If any other human tastes death, how would that be different? I, I'm not sure other humans can taste death in the way being referred to. So can we define what tasting death means according to the Bible? Uh, tentatively, yeah. I think it refers to dying for a short amount of time and being resurrected. Short amount of time. Sure. Uh, shall we say like Lazarus? Um, that's a good point. Did he taste death? I guess in a way he tasted death, yeah. But he didn't taste death on behalf of other people the way Jesus did. But that's a belief. The literal construction, well, that's, that's uh, uh, no, the literal construction of the scripture is telling us a different story. So if we are told, and you must bear in mind here, I did mention it earlier on, that where the, the, the Bible talks about uh, wants to die right. after the, the resurrection. Now, purposive construction, literal construction, 
we have to think about this because the next question logically speaking is when we say he shall see his offspring he shall see his offspring uh, he shall prolong his days my contention is that if everything else is literal so is that okay so we have uh, the Bible telling us wants to die after that the resurrection okay. it is ordained unto all men wants to die okay. okay so the question is after that the resurrection Paul supports it in context when he says dies physical body resurrected a spiritual body now question is this if Christ Jesus temporarily tasted death and was resurrected Lazarus temporarily died yep. was resurrected yep. did he die again uh, Lazarus did die again I, 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 I presume so yes ah I'm so glad you I'm so glad you qualified it when we say I pres presume so we don't actually have any record of him dying again oh, true. yeah but it's not it's not the emphasis wasn't about him dying right again. The, the reason why and I'm so glad you are being honest yeah. Richard yeah, you see the reason why I'm raising this is that if we look at verses and we understand them in a particular context yeah. and someone introduces something new then we should by right as human beings reconsider how we have actually viewed something so I would I would uh, humbly submit here that the verse itself is literal about his prolonging of days but as you rightly pointed out it's something we need to look at yeah, yeah? I mean, maybe you need to look at it more further sure and i mean the prolonging of days i'm accepting that's literal yeah, the only excellent. thing i'm saying is maybe not literal is the offspring bit. right yes. uh, agreed but what we have to do now is look at the context as i said christ jesus is recorded as having said the creator answers all my prayers and he's telling the public yeah he asks for being saved from death well, does it say answers all no, no, prayers no. or is heard i don't know I no, 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 no. Uh, john 11 41. No, no. he put it that his way the gospel of john or jesus way but god's will is the, the no that's it uh, no th that is matthew 26 verse yeah, 36 this is a different one john 11 41. For two things. one is his will and the other is god's will oh absolutely yeah, so like it a, be, like a true prophet of god will. he submits his will to god and god answer his own will not jesus will because this I wanted a cup to pass. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it says he always hears him, not necessarily that he always yeah. grants him what he asks. Ah, I agree with you. But you see, if I tell you God heard me, what does that mean? It can mean different things. It can mean God heard me and answered exactly in the way I wanted to. Excellent. No, 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 I'm not finished. Oh, sorry. It can mean God heard me and although he didn't do what I asked for, he still did something good for me. Or it can mean God heard me and although he can't help me out of the situation, he's reassured me with his love, whatever. Excellent. It can be used in different ways. I agree with you. But when Jesus Christ is saying, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. What does that mean? Uh, I'm not sure. It could be generic. That is, he's always heard and it could mean any of those three. Okay, excellent. Or it could be specific that it means one of the three. I right. Uh, no, no, I agree with you. And we can do further research on it. Okay. But what I am uh, suggesting to you, uh, Brother Richard, we are looking and we have only for the past 45 minutes dwelled on only Timing. yeah we have dwelled only on isaiah 53 we have not even touched those others that well, you, been, you mentioned but what we can do <laughs> you're right but, Bruce, but, gonna... but what i would i would suggest perhaps uh, do you come regularly here richard excellent we are wazy is disappeared i'm glad because i usually come after four weeks here what perhaps we can do richard if you can further study this particular aspect we, we can come back address it and move on to the next one if you want yeah, yeah? That, that would be better because then hopefully we will both have a better understanding of what you are trying to say and how we should really interpret the verses Sounds good to me. what do you think I, I I I I brilliant Sorry. a pleasure Likewise. richard Sorry. if i said anything offensive all, or untoward please do forgive me that was not intended at all yeah yeah about the resurrection which body and that. that's, a, that's another topic. That's a, yeah, all another, another one. So we will move there. to another. Excellent. Right. Look after yourself, Richard. Yeah?